Hi lovely and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy. This time I'm reviewing the two Enchanted Ink short stories, Criminal Enchantment and Paint the Town Red. These are both written by Shanna Swenson. They're kind of asides to the main Enchanted Ink story that is happening and I'm pretty sure that these are only available as ebooks. They are both kind of detective stories and they're both told from the perspective of Sam and the security gargoyle for MSI. Um, this is an urban fantasy slash chiclet series, but these more focus on the urban fantasy part of it. Um, Sam's kind of a gruff guy. He loves film noir type detective stories, and that's what we're getting here. Criminal Enchanted is a prequel to Enchanted Inc. You could go into either of these short stories not having read the main series. I do think it's way better to read Enchanted Inc. first before you read Criminal Enchantment, though, um, just because it's a short story and so it doesn't do a lot of world building so for like the whole world building thing the first book's better. Criminal Enchantment is the longer of the two and Pink the Town Red is super short like only a few pages. Um, Criminal Enchantment might even be a novella but it's hard to tell in an ebook exactly how long it is. So Criminal Enchantment we are following Sam a couple weeks maybe a couple months before the first book starts. We're starting to see some of the rogue spells that Idris is uh, creating uh, ending up on the market, although we don't know what's Idris yet. Um, so we are following Sam, and we see Owen and more of MSI team um, before they meet Katie, basically. Although we do see Katie. One of my favorite parts of the story is Owen noticing Katie for the first time, and they're in a bookstore, and he is, like, hiding behind a book watching her and just kind of like enjoying it but he's too shy to go talk to her and it is so cute and Sam's like teasing him because Owen so rarely has crushes and notices girls that he's like oh you like this girl um and of course Sam's a gargoyle so it's like the most ridiculous thing that he would tease him uh tease Owen about having a crush uh but that's one of my favorite parts of the short story anyway the main plot of the story is that Sam stops a robbery um in progress so there is a wizard trying to steal from a deli and he uses the spell that basically makes the deli owner not notice that he's walking out with stolen goods. Um, I don't know that he, I don't exactly know how the spell works if he doesn't notice the guy at all or if he just thinks it's normal to be walking out with like 50 bags of chips who knows. Um, these are kind of small-time criminals they're not stealing a lot like basically just grabbing stuff off the shelf um, grab your soda kind of thing. But Sam has noticed this happening a lot. There has been like a spree of different wizards using the same spell that's flawed and has like the same flaws. Um, and so they are trying to figure out who the distributor is, who is selling the spell and stop it. Um, so Sam goes into detective mode, trying to tail the criminal, trying to figure out where he's buying spells from, um, and just doing surveillance, which is just such a cool aesthetic to it. Um, I love Sam's narration too. We also find out more about the gargoyles in general, what magic Sam does and doesn't have, how the whole like cell phone thing kind of works. Like there's this, Sam can communicate with the wizards via cell phone, but Sam never is seen with a cell phone. So we kind of get into that spell. Um, we get into the fact that they're really good at surveillance because they can just sit for days or months or years and not get tired. Um, although there is a danger that they might forget that there's they're sentient and just like turn to a regular stone. But we get to find out way more about the gargoyles and about Sam and about security in this. Um, we also see a plot for involving MSI and trying to track it down. They find out who the distributor is, or at least the guy on the street, and try to like send in one of the wizards who can't see anything weird. So then they try to send in one of the immunes. Um, and we also find out about how bad the immunes are at MSI and why they really need Katie, um, why she is so spectacularly important because the immunes they already have on staff are not so great or dedicated and flighty. Uh, da, 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 da. Basically things escalate and one of the criminals gets it in his mind to rob a bank and that's kind of the climax of the story. Um, and we do see Katie in this story again which was just awesome. So I just enjoyed getting to see more of the world of Enchanted Inc, getting to see what things were like before Katie stepped in, getting to see things from Sam's perspective. Uh, we kind of get a bit more about Owen and how he's like when he has his guard down and isn't around Katie because he gets so shy. 
um, especially in the first few books, to like see Owen before he meets her. It was so cute. So that's that's the first one. That's Criminal Enchantment. Story two, Paint the Town in Red. Um, I think this is actually the first one that was written, and it's a really short story. Basically, Sam is flying around New York, and he's noticing these gnomes running across the rooftops, which is a bit weird because gnomes generally like the ground and dirt. And then he notices that they all have these red hats on, or these red caps. And they're actually not normal gnomes, they are actually this magical creature called a red cap that needs to keep its cap red by soaking it in blood of the murdered um, in order to survive. And so that's not something you really want running around the town. It's kind of funny to see the little tiny gnome running around with like a knife and forgetting it has a knife and trying to talk to Sam and hide it and then just like pulling it out again. Like this is a funny short story. Um, it mostly focuses on Sam, who's narrating, and also his encounters with this one particular red cap, who is this girl, who also has apparently seen a lot of these noir films that Sam loves and getting to see their interactions. She's trying to flirt with him. They're not even the same species. Sam is a gar gargoyle. It's a bit ridiculous. Sam points out the ridiculousness of this, um, but also she's going around murdering people, which is something Sam is definitely against, so it wouldn't work out. I just, I love the whole, like, tracking her and the interactions when she's caught and trying to, like, talk her way out of it. She's like, I'm just trying to survive. Um, and just, I mean, literally, this is a few pages, guys. There's not much more to the story. It is really cute and really quick. So, yeah. I ended up giving both of these short stories five out of five stars. I really enjoyed them. They're really adorable additions to the Enchanted Ink universe. I would actually like to see kind of a collection of short stories if we saw more of the Enchanted Ink universe from different characters' perspectives. Like, I want to know what is up with Isabel, who's like this part giantess, and how she sees the world. Or like, getting to see some of the bad guys tell their stories. Like, there is potential in these to like have a collection of short stories that are asides to the main series. That would be so much fun. Um, but I also really enjoy these and I love getting to see Sam, getting to know him better, and getting like in his head and his thought process. I will link my reviews to the main Enchanted Ink series down in the description below. Book one is Enchanted Ink. And I so love this series, guys, so much. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let me know if you have read these and what you thought of it. What do you think of the series? Um, yeah. So peace out. I love you guys. And keep reading. Bye!